Good morning everyone and welcome to our on online service here on Sunday morning the 17th of January. Hard to believe we're at this stage already. Um, but welcome as we join together to worship God. Just a couple of announcements to make this morning. First one is thank you for everyone who got involved with our prayer day yesterday. Uh, I know some people signed up for slots, other people didn't. Uh, didn't matter if you did or not, but thank you for being involved, for using their pr prayer points as we thought about our world. And keep those prayer points as well and use them um, even in this incoming week. Um, just to again join in um, as we pray for everything that's going on around us. The second announcement just this morning is, as expected, we are still obviously online. Um, it's due to be reviewed towards the end of the month. And at this stage, the date is that our, our lockdown continues until the 6th of February. Uh, we don't know if it will end then or if it will continue. It just really depends on what's going on with the virus. So we will keep you posted on any new developments. But again, thank you to everyone for your help and support during these times. Um, we are planning to do a, a drop off day um, as soon as possible in February, whenever we can do that. Um, and again, we'll keep you posted and keep you more information going on about that as well. Um, but in the meantime, if there are any issues that arrive at, arise at all, don't be afraid to either phone me directly or to phone your elder um, and even phone the office um, in the morning time between Tuesdays and Thursdays as well. Um, Barbara is still mostly working in the office, um, but the doors are closed. Um, but So please, if there's anything, just pick up the phone and let us know. But thank you, everyone, for, like I say, for all your support, all your prayers, all your thoughts to us all over these days. They are strange and unusual days. But we're still a church family. We can still do the things that we would normally do. Um, we can still do our birthday blessings. So I have a couple of birthdays to announce this morning. So for this incoming week, um, we have two people that I know of who've got birthdays coming up this week who are Stephen Boyle and Sylvia Tweedy. You both have birthdays. So um, let us pray for you this week. Father, again, as we come to worship you, um, still in this different way, we still thank you that we're a family and that we're still united, we're still together. Uh, and Lord, for that, we, we give you thanks. Uh, we continue to remember those members of our congregation, of our church family, who will have birthdays coming up. So for Stephen and for Sylvia and for their families, Lord, thank you for birthdays that are coming up. May your hand continue to be upon them and their families and bless them and keep them safe, we pray, in these days. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If there's any other birthdays that I have missed, apologies. Um, remember, just during the week, if you can let me know any that are coming up so I can give them a mention, that would be great. Um, and if any come up that I have missed, I'll try and give you a mention next week. You know, we, we, we pray our birthday blessings. Um, yesterday we had 12 hours whenever we were, we were praying from 8 in the morning to 8 at night about everything that's going on. The reason that we do that is because of something that we read in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. This morning as we come to worship God, what is worrying you? What is concerning you? Whatever it is, just give it to God right now. Let's pause before we start. And in the quietness, just hand over your worries and concern to him and ask God to help you. So let us pray. Father, we give our worries and our concerns to you this day because that's what you have told us to do. We cast everything at your feet, asking that you take care of them. Lord, we thank you that you are the only God, the one true God, that you listen to everything that we say. There's not a word that gets missed by you. And we thank you for that. And Lord, more than that, we thank you that whenever you, that the fact that you hear our prayers means that you answer our prayers as well. Even if they are only shouted quietly from our hearts and not even vocalised, you hear them and you answer them. Lord, thank you. You are a great and amazing, a wonderful God. And in everything, we focus our eyes and our hearts upon you. 
So, Father, we thank you this morning, now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I wondered this morning, did you see the picture that I posted online? It didn't go up at first, um, but then it did go up. And I wondered, were you able to see that picture this morning? And can you tell me what the object is? Now, I have it hiding on my desk here somewhere. And I'm just trying to find it on all my bits of paper so that I can, oh, there it is, show it to you again um, and see if anyone is quick enough to type in what they think this is. Now, I will hold it up that way round, first of all. And I wonder if you can spot what it is. Now, I give you a clue. If I were to turn it round, I'm trying to hide something, that way, there's another part of it to plug something into it. Now that something, whenever it's all curled up, looks like that. And on one end, it's got one of those. And on the other end, for this one, there is something like that. Who's going to be quick enough to type in? Anyone? It's probably a little delay in Facebook. We can't. On the other end, it has got this. Now, if you're very good and you can see right in the very middle there, you'll see a little Apple symbol. So you'll realise that that is a charger for something like an iPhone or an iPad. Now, if you own an iPhone or an iPad or if you have any sort of mobile phone at home, you know what it's like. It's really annoying. The fact that whenever you're out and about and you're doing something, the battery just gets lower and lower. And sometimes whenever you go to make a phone call, there's no power left. And maybe you get cut off. Maybe you've forgotten to plug it in and charge it. A bit like the laptop at times. You know, and you're scrambling to find a charger because it needs more power. Yep, Phil, you put the plug on it. Well done. I wonder if you feel like that at times, boys and girls. Um, whenever you're trying to do your skill work at home, do you get hungry? Do you feel that it's hard to concentrate and you want a snack? Something which will give you a little bit of a boost. Now, if, if you're really healthy, uh, maybe your snack is something like this. There's a nice pear for you this morning. Uh, and it, it's really nutritious for you, full of vitamins as well as some natural sugars. Um, maybe you, you prefer something a little bit sweeter. Uh, maybe a snack is something like that. Sorry that it's back to front, that's just the way the camera is. Maybe like a little bit of chocolate. Um, but we all need something just to give ourselves a little boost, don't we, boys and girls? Until lunchtime comes, until dinner time comes, and then mum or dad or granny and granda make us something which is, um, there's different foods in it. Because that's the thing, if you were always just to eat a bit of fruit or a bit of chocolate, it wouldn't actually be really good for you, sure wouldn't. You need to eat the balance of all the foods together so that uh, you get everything that you need. Well, you know, we're the same, boys and girls. We need to eat spiritually as well. That means we need to read God's word so that we can learn what God is teaching us so that we can grow strong in how we understand God and then in how we can tell others about God. You know, at times we do get really tired. We do get really frustrated even in our lives, in our walks with God. I mean, I'm going to read to you, boys and girls, a couple of words this morning found in a psalm. It's Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. The psalmist, and it's David, was finding it really, really difficult. He was struggling with everything that was going on and he was able to pray to God, to talk to God, tell him what was going on and God was able to help him. And it's the same today. God wants us to talk to him, to tell him the things which are uh, exciting for us, the things which are going really well, but equally the things which we are struggling with, the things that we are finding difficult. And God wants to listen to us and to help us. And God wants us to read his word, the Bible, uh, so that we can learn more about him, so that we can grow stronger each day. You know, maybe 
there's maybe you don't like some of the food that mum or dad or granny and granda make for you and maybe they use this line well if you eat it you'll grow up big and strong um one of the things whenever i was younger whenever you had a sandwich um, my grand used to say to me if you eat your crusts you'll get curly hair well i did eat my crusts but i didn't get curly hair you know and we, and we tell our you know our children these things but god's word does help us now at times it might seem strange we might wonder about some of the stories but all of it fits together to tell us a story about how god loves us how he made this world and how he wants us to live our lives for him and to follow him and how he will always be with us because he is a faithful god so boys and girls let me encourage you each day in the midst of all that you're doing at home i know you're doing a great job with all your schoolwork and i know it's not easy trying to do homework at home and i know it can be very frustrating at times but in the middle of all of that take some time each day whenever you can maybe with mum or dad or with a big brother or sister or, or with somebody else in the family you can sit and you can read the bible and you can pray together so that you understand better each day who god is and what he has done for us and just how much he loves you. So whenever you're having a snack this week, remember that. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for how it feeds us, how it teaches us, how it guides us. Lord, for all of our boys and girls, help them each day to be able to read your word, uh, to be able to grow stronger, um, and to grow closer to you, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for watching and just pray that this week as you plug something in or as you have a snack that you remember that. Now we're going to read God's word together. I'm going to read together um, three passages this morning, would you believe? Um, they're all very short little passages um, and they're all found in the book of Matthew. So I want to read a couple of verses from Matthew 5, which is the Beatitudes. Then a couple of verses from Matthew 11 and a few verses from Matthew 12. So these are all taken from the New Living Translation. So Matthew chapter 5, verses 5 to 7. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And then this is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. This is Jesus talking. It says there, then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. And then the last passage is from Matthew chapter 12, verses 14 to 21. Then the Pharisees called a meeting to plot how to kill Jesus. But Jesus knew what they were planning. So he left that area and many people followed him. He healed all the sick among them, but he warned them not to reveal who he was. This was to fill the prophecy of Isaiah concerning him. Look at my servant who I have chosen. He is my beloved who pleases me. I will put my spirit upon him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious and his name will be the hope of all the world. Amen. And we ask God to bless this reading of his word. And we'll turn to it shortly. Let's just pause and pray. Um, I've just picked out a couple of the things which PCI had highlighted this week for us to pray for. Um, they asked us to give thanks for organisations who are reaching out and helping people at this time. Uh, one of the ones which they highlighted is Christians Against Poverty, who are working with those who are struggling with debt. So let's give thanks for their work. But let's also pray for those people who are struggling with that at this time. Uh, and in the middle of everything else that's going on, things are, life still has to go forward and things change. 
and for Union College one change has been a change of principal. Stafford Carson has retired and now Gordon Campbell has taken over as principal. Let's pray for Gordon in these days um, that he would know God's leading and direction upon him. And then we've been asked to pray for the Church of North India. Um, India at one stage during this week, I don't know if it's still the same, but they had the second highest rate of COVID infections in the world. And the Church of North India is um, reaching out into that situation. So let's pray for that Church of North India. And then let's pray for um, two of our churches within PCR at this time. Um, the churches are at the joint charge of Clock and Seaford. Uh, and their minister, uh, Adrian Adger, friend of mine, passed away this past week. So let's pray for those churches at this time. It's a difficult time. Let's pray for Adrian's wife, Karen, um, in the days that lie ahead as well. And let's just pray for the church in general. So let's come together and let's pray this morning. Dear God and our loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you again that we can come to you and talk to you. That we can thank you that we can just praise you, that we can also pour out to you and give to you the things which are worrying and troubling us. I just ask for your help. Lord, we do thank you for all the organisations helping people during this difficult time. Whatever those organisations may be, Lord, whether they are providing foods or shelter, um, whether they are providing um, that sort of practical need or financial need, Lord, thank you for all of those who are in the front line of such doing this work. And we do especially pray for Christians against poverty this morning. Um, Lord, so many people this time have fallen into debt. They are struggling because of a loss of a job or loss of income. Thank you that camp are there to help, to advise, to guide. And Lord, as people are referred to them, Lord, may they just be able to, to get the help that they need. Um, as quickly as possible. So Lord, thank you for CAP this morning. Lord, we thank you that um, that sense of, of life continuing as well, even in the middle of a pandemic. And it's important for us, Lord, that we do try and continue with things. And we thank you that Union College continues to teach our ministry students and continues to finish off um, those theology degrees which they are teaching and to help others. And Lord, we think about Gordon Campbell, who has come in as principal. We ask that you be with Gordon and you would help him. Um, Lord, just may your blessing be upon him and give him wisdom uh, to know how to lead the college at this time. And Lord, we pray as well and we give you thanks for the Church of North India. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the partnership which we have with them. Uh, and Lord, just that we would have our we know ways to be able to strengthen that partnership and to be able to help them. Lord, we think about that church in particular because of the the rate of um, COVID which is happening in India uh, and we know Lord it is a struggle they've, they've embarked upon it and a very ambitious program to be able to get the vaccine out to their people and we thank you for that we just ask that you would give them wisdom and give the churches out there wisdom as they look for ways to help and support Lord we always want to help and support one another and that is why this morning we pray for our brothers and sisters in the churches of Clock and Seaford. Lord, we remember Karen at this time um, and the loss of Adrian this past week. And Lord, such an amazing service of thanksgiving that happened this week and how so many people were able to watch because of Facebook. And we thank you for that. And we know that more people will watch that service this incoming week. We just pray that that service would speak to many. But Lord, at this time, just be with Karen. Be with her family, be with Adrian's family as well. Bring your, your peace and your blessing upon them. And for the churches of Clock and Seaford, Lord, as they look to move forward, again, just be with them in this time of bereavement and bring your peace and comfort to them. Lord, individually, we bring to you again those things which trouble and worry us. We bring them and we leave them at your feet, asking that you would help us, that you would guide us and direct us. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I wonder as I read those verses from Matthew 5 this morning, from the Beatitudes, what you thought of them. 
Let me read them to you again. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who are hungry and thirsty for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Some translations don't translate that word as humble, they translate it as meek. Um, some people, when they think of that word meek, they, they, they change it to the word weak. Um, they say that meekness is a sign of weakness and humble is a sign of not having a backbone. But people completely miss the point. Think of leaders around our world. Think of those people who lead nations and countries. Now, first of all, would you like to be one of those people? Would you like to be a leader? Um, certainly at this time, the answer, for, I think, for most of us would be no, wouldn't it? When you think about the decisions that you have to make, uh, and as you think of the, the criticism that you come under uh, as you make those decisions, uh, and this is a time whenever, no matter how good you are, some people will criticise you and say you've got something wrong where others might encourage you. But even as you look around the leaders of the world, I think you probably would agree with me that there are some leaders who we see as good leaders and some who we see as poor leaders. But the good leaders are those who are humble, who listen to what is going on around them, who look out to their people. Whereas those leaders who we see as weak are the ones who are not humble, who are not meek, who try to force their will upon others. The Beatitudes sometimes are called the beautiful attitudes. And the Beatitudes, is, it's, it's all about teaching us our approach, our attitude towards others. And the person who we can learn from best this way is Jesus himself. That's why I read those two passages taken from Matthew chapters 11 and 12, which talk about the attitude of Christ and his approach. Jesus said about himself, um, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We started off this morning by thinking about how we can give to God all our cares and woes. And that is so true. We can. He does care for us. Jesus goes on that to say, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. If And you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy to bear and my burden, the burden I give you is light. What does it mean in that passage when it says that Jesus is humble? What can we learn from how that word is applied to Jesus for how we live our lives every day? Because it's not what this is about. Don't we want to know from the Bible how we should live our lives and what we should do? And who's the best example of that but Jesus himself? Well, the passage in Matthew 12 explains a little bit about what it means to be humble in the way that Jesus is. In Isaiah, which is quoted, it says about this, and this is the New Testament translation of it. Um, he is my beloved who pleases me. This is Jesus. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout or raise his voice. He will not crush the wicked reed or put out a flicker of a candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious and his name will be the hope of all the world. Jesus never forced himself upon anybody um, here on earth. Jesus invited the disciples to come and join him. And the disciples did. Jesus got alongside the people. He looked for what their needs were physically, first of all. He met those needs. And then he started to talk to them and teach them in very gentle ways. He used parables, which many people didn't understand, and certainly the disciples didn't understand, but then Jesus explained that to them. 
And then that explanation, I am sure, was passed on to the people who were listening as well. Because many would have heard Jesus talking to his disciples. And then as his disciples started to record and write down, and as, as those writings were read amongst the people, then they understood. But it says in, in Isaiah, and which is quoted in, in Matthew 12, that he will not crush the weakest reader put out a flickering candle. He will not force himself upon anyone. And think about it. Think about all that we know from the four Gospels about Jesus teaching those who were around him. When did he shout and rant and rave? When did he give off? He didn't. We saw Jesus being annoyed or being cross with the religious leaders of the time. Those who should have known better. Those who were meant to be educated and understand the scriptures, the Old Testament. And how they weren't teaching the people right. That annoyed Jesus. And then whenever Jesus went into the temple and you had the money changers who were stealing from the people. People who were selling sacrifice, animals for sacrifice and making a fortune off them. That annoyed Jesus. Because those people had taken the temple, which was his father's house, and it turned it into something that it was never meant to be. It was meant to be the place where people would come to to meet with God. The place where people would know the presence of God, know his forgiveness and healing, know his peace and blessing. And they had turned it into business. Jesus was humble because Jesus didn't force himself. I wonder are we ever forceful? I wonder do we ever try to convert people by not letting up with them, by constantly bombarding them, by constantly putting them in a corner uh, and telling them they need to be saved. You know, that, that's, a, that's a line of, just one way that we have seen happen in our, particularly in our country over the years. If you hear somebody doing an open air, I mean, lots of people just walk by but, and, and they dismiss it. They, they, they say, what, what's that person shouting about? And you've got to wonder about how we approach people, how we bring the good news to them. Because certainly we have to bring the good news of what Jesus has done for us to this world that's around us. But it's about the attitude that we do that and about the approach that we do that. The attitudes talk about those who are humble and how they will inherit the whole earth. If we bring God's word in that peaceful way, how that good news spreads and how God's people spread and populate the earth, how they inherit the earth. How because we want to bring that good news, we want to bring the justice that there is for that good news. How we have that good news of forgiveness of sins. And how whenever people realise that, and whenever people accept Christ, they will be satisfied. Some people like it, some people don't. That, 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 that sort of image that um, we are a jigsaw and there's a piece of us missing. Uh, and that missing piece is Christ. It's been used in adverts. Um, further education used it saying you're missing a piece of you if, you if you don't go on for further education. And then you become a whole person. Um, different other people have used that, that sort of sense of what fits together um, to, to advertise their products. But that actually is a really good image of us. We are a jigsaw with a missing piece. And that piece is Christ. And how, whenever you finish a jigsaw, you are satisfied. You, you get that sense of achievement. And how, whenever we have that missing piece added to our life, how we are satisfied and how those of us who, who share in that, those of us who share God's word, are satisfied as well. And again then verse 7, blessed are those who are merciful for they will be shown mercy. That fits in with humble. 
It says about Jesus, he will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious. and His name will be the hope of all the world. Being humble is sharing God's word. Not in a way which is forceful, but a way, in a way that God's word speaks for itself. You see, the Pharisees had lots of rules and regulations and you had to, 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 to follow those rules. And if you didn't follow those rules, you were chastised. Uh, you were told that you weren't good enough. Um, you had to go and do more sacrifices. Um, you were the lowest of the low. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Now that word yoke can also mean teachings. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle of heart. And you will find rest for my soul, for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Jesus doesn't burden us with lots of teachings. He tells us that we simply need to follow him. Ask him to forgive our sins, let him into our hearts. Whatever phrase you want to use, have personal faith and then follow him. But then he wants us to be humble in how we do that. He wants us to be gentle towards others, not critical, not putting them down, not subjecting them and burdening them and saying, you must do this, 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 this and this. But simply let God into your life and let him change it. See, that's the thing. Whenever we let God in, whenever we let Jesus in, he does change it, doesn't he? He transforms our lives. And then if we truly let him in, he makes us humble because we realise that it's not about us, but it's about God and about what he has done. And it's about simply sharing that with others. You let your actions speak for you. And that's what Jesus did as he went around this world. His actions spoke for themselves, didn't they? Their, his actions spoke for who he was and what he had come to do. So I wonder at the minute, do your actions speak about Jesus? Do your actions speak love? Do your actions say that? Or do your actions point towards us? I'm important. I'm special. You have to listen to me because I knew better than you. If our actions are like that, then we're not humble. We're not meek. And we're not taking on the attitude of Christ. Whereas if our actions are to reach out and to help others, and this is the time when we can do that. If our actions are to show others that we care about them, not just through what we do, but through what we don't do as well. Then that allows an opportunity to, for somebody to say, well, why are you doing that? And we can say, because Christ loves you. Because God loves you. And we can share that humble attitude. So here's a strange question for you. What have you got planned for this week? Now I know you might turn around and say, well, what do you mean what I've got planned for this week? Sure, we're in the middle of a lockdown. What can I do? Well, think about it. There's lots that you can or you can choose not to do, which will show if you're humble, which will show the love of Christ. Do you have to run out to the shops every day? Do you have to go out and, and do X, Y and Z? Well, maybe you do. But when you do that, is there anybody else around you who can't get out? Somebody else who maybe you could help them and say, well, what can I get for you? Is there somebody who you can simply phone and say, how are you doing? Somebody who you can phone and say, what can I pray for for you? Or maybe somebody who you can just say, I'm thinking about you right now. And then you can let them know just how much God loves them through your humble actions by getting 
God in the right place in our life. It makes us humble. So where is God in my life and in your life today? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word and what it teaches us. Lord, thank you for your son and for the humble attitude that he had in every situation. How everything that he did was about letting the people know that you are God and that you love them so much. Father, we want to do the same. We want our actions to be humble. We want our actions to point towards you. So Lord, before we do things, help us to think about what we're doing, to examine ourselves and then to give all our actions over to you, that you would be able to use them all to speak volumes about you. Help us to be humble and meek. Help us to seek justice. Help us to share your word with others. Lord, we thank you now and always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks folks for joining with me this morning. It's been great to have you um, online. Uh, during the week, continue to do, I will continue to do the Bible readings on a morning time, Monday to Friday at half nine. And then on a Wednesday night, we have our Bible study as well. If you're able to join live at any of those times, please do. If you pick it up later on, then um, that, that's great. But um, please feel free to link in. And again, just a wee reminder, if there's anything at any stage that you want to share or anything that I can help with or your elder, please feel free to pick up the phone and to let us know. Um, and, and, and let us know how we can help or support or how we can be praying for you or how we can do something practical. But in the meantime, take care and God bless. Bye for now.